Hello, thank you for watching this video. So in this video, I'm doing question 6 of May June 2023, question by physical science paper 1. And the topic is the Doppler effect. So I'll read question 6 statement and then answer the questions that follow. So let's go. So we'll start at 6.1. 6.1 read as follow. A car moves at a constant velocity of 22 meters per second on a straight horizontal road towards a stationary device, which can both emit and detect sound waves. The device emits sound waves with a frequency of 24,000 Hz. These sound waves are reflected off the car, and the reflected sound waves are then detected by the device as shown in the diagram. Let me read this thing again. They are saying, a car moves at a constant velocity of 22 meters per second on a straight horizontal road towards a stationary device, which can both emit and detect sound waves. The device emits sound waves with a frequency of 24,000 Hz. These sound waves are reflected off the car and the reflected sound waves are then detected by the device as shown in the diagram. So, this is the situation here. So we have this car here, which is moving at 22 meters per second to the right, right? And this car is moving towards this stationary device here. So this device is stationary. What does that tell us? which means this device is not moving. This velocity is zero meters per second. The device is not moving. So this car is moving at 22 meters per second towards the stationary device, right? So what they're telling us, this device have the ability of emitting sound waves and detecting sound waves. That's what they told us. So they say that this device of ours emits sound waves at a frequency of 24,000 Hz. So, this device um, here, here's our device, it emits a frequency uh, of what? Of 24,000, emits sound waves at a frequency of 24,000 Hz. It emits sound waves of that frequency, or at that frequency, no problem. So, these emitted sound waves they go towards our car and they are reflected back to the sound waves. So it's more like the, the, the emitted sound wave which is 24,000 hertz, they go towards the car and they bounce back off the car. They bounce off the car back to the device. That is what they are telling us. So let's go to the question. First question, 6.1.1, state the Doppler effect in words. So they want you to state the Doppler effect in words. What is the Doppler effect? So, as you might know by now, Doppler effect, it is the observed change in frequency of a sound, right? Due to a non-zero velocity difference between the source of sound and the observer. So, I'll make an example of this and then try to explain it. Let's say there is an ambulance at a scene. Let's say there is an accident somewhere. Then there is a scene and an ambulance goes to that scene and stops there. Let's say now, let's assume that uh, the the ambulance responders are rescuing people from that accident. And for some reason, the ambulance siren is still on as they are doing, as they are trying to help the civilians out, right? So if you approach the scene, you are going towards the ambulance, which have its siren on, which is producing the sound, right? So you will notice that as you are approaching the ambulance, the frequency of the sound or the pitch of that sound will sound will appear to sound louder and louder as we are approaching the ambulance. You know this very well. I'm sure you've been to places where you approach a place where there's music, uh, music playing. As you approach that place, the music sounds louder and louder, right? That phenomenon is the Doppler effect. That change in the frequency of those sound waves is the Doppler effect. So that observed change in frequency is the Doppler effect. But if you're sitting still and not moving, let's say now there's that ambulance is, you can see where the ambulance is. You approach and stop at some point. Once you start stop, once you stop, this the frequency of the sound will not change. You'll hear the, the this frequency of the sound to be the same. There will be no change in frequency of the sound because now your velocity is zero. And that of the ambulance is zero. So the velocity difference is zero. So when there's a 
Velocity difference of zero between the source of sound and the observer. Doppler effect is not observed. So for Doppler effect to be observed, you need your velocity to be non-zero, truth to be not zero. So if you're moving towards an ambulance, your frequency now will also seem to be increasing the frequency of the sound because now your velocity is not zero because you're moving towards the ambulance. So now the, dif the difference between the velocity of a source and the velocity of a sound is non-zero, which means you need a non-zero velocity difference or you need a relative motion between the source of sound and the observer in order to observe the Doppler effect. So, in simple terms, you say your Doppler effect, it is the observed change in frequency of a sound due to a non-zero velocity difference between the source of sound and the observer. Or you can say it is the observed change in frequency of a sound due to the relative motion between the source of sound and the observer. So that non-zero velocity difference and the relative motion is the same. So, let's go. So it's 6.1.1. We say Doppler effect. Doppler effect is the observed change in what? In frequency of a sound. Right? Due to what? To non zero velocity difference, right? Between the source of your sound, source of sound, and observe or the listener so again Doppler effect is the observed change in frequency of a sound due to non-zero velocity difference between the source of sound and the observer let's say due to a non-zero velocity difference between the source of sound and the observer so that non-zero velocity difference tells you that there is a relative motion between the source of sound and the observer. That's what that tells you. So, we're down to 6.1.1. Now we go to 6.1.2. Okay, so now, we're going to 6.1.2. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to 6.1.2. 6.1.2 read as follows. If the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second, calculate the frequency of the reflected sound waves detected by the device. Let me read this thing again. They are saying if the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second, Calculate the frequency of the reflected sound waves detected by the device. So, they are telling you now that the speed of sound in air, V, is equal to 340 meters per second. What do they want? They want the frequency, right? Uh, detected. Deter they want the frequency detected by the stationary device device that's what they wanted to find they want the frequency detected by the stationary device so here is what you need to understand is that this device they told you that it emits sound waves at a frequency of 24,000 hertz right so they have highlighted the, the emitted sound waves as red. So these emitted sound waves of yours will go towards your car. So because your car is approaching the source of sound, right? Because this is the source of sound, right? The car is approaching the source of sound. So this frequency emitted, the frequency of these sound waves will appear higher at the car. So 
this car will be registering higher frequency because it is approaching the source of sound. Similar, when you are approaching the ambulance, when you are approaching the ambulance that was stationary, the sideline of the ambulance appeared to be getting louder and louder. So you now the frequency of the sound waves of that siren were reaching you at a higher rate. So more sound waves were reaching you per second. That's what was happening, which means higher frequency. So at this point, if this device is stationary, like they say, and this car is moving towards this device, and this device is emitting sound waves, then the frequency observed here, here, by the car, so the frequency of the car will be higher because the car is approaching the source of sound. So this car will approach the source of, so the, this car will register higher frequencies than what is being emitted because the car is, is approaching the, the stationary device that is producing sound waves. So what will happen is this car will be hit or will encounter more and more sound waves per second as it is getting closer and closer to the device. What does that mean? If you encounter more and more sound waves per second, that means higher frequency. Because you know, frequency is the number of complete waves per second, or the number of waves that passes the point per second. So now if this car is approaching the device, so what that means, it is getting hit by many, by many waves per second, which means higher frequency by definition. So what are you going to do? So, but this is not the frequency that they want. They don't want the frequency uh, detected by the car. They want the frequency detected by the device. So what will happen is, this car will detect this frequency that will, will be higher than what is actually produced. And whatever that higher frequency is, it will be, ref it will be reflecting back to the device. Right? It will be reflecting back to the device. That's what will be happening. So this car will observe this frequency and the same frequency in green now is being reflected away back to the device. So now that case, this will make the car to be the source of the frequency. To be a fre this will make your car to be a frequency source and this device of yours to be a frequency detector. That's what will happen. Because the device emitted sound waves and then those sound waves go to the car and will observe at a higher frequency, right? And then those sound waves are reflected back, which is now they are pushed away towards the device. So now this car acts as a source of new sound waves that are going back to the device. So now you want to find the frequency of those new sound waves or those reflected sound waves that are going to the device. That's what you need to find. Because you want this frequency here. The frequency of of the the frequency detected by the device so let's go so now what you want you want the frequency of the of a listener which is found by the device or detected by the device but what you need first you need to know what frequency was uh, registered by the car as it was approaching so that you know now, the same, the frequency, which is the same frequency that the car will be supplying back to the device or will be reflecting back to the device. So, now the frequency of a listener, now, right? With your listener, in this case, or your observer being the car, in this case. In this case, I'm looking for the frequency of a listener. But my listener, in this case, is the car. So, I want to know those frequencies that are registered by the car. What is the frequency registered by the car? Which means from those sound waves that are produced by the device, of course. Which means the frequency, we know that the frequency of a listener is equal to V plus or minus velocity of a listener all over V plus or minus velocity of a source times the frequency of a source. This is your Doppler effect formula, right? No problem. But listen, you know that the frequency here because the car is approaching the source of sound, it is reached by many sound waves per second, which means higher frequency, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know that the frequency of a listener, right, which is your car at this point, because your car is the one that is detected, will be higher 
done that, that is produced by the detector because the car is approaching a source of sound. The same way, when you approach a place with music playing, play, the more you get closer, the higher the sound is for the music or the pitch. So, same way, the car will observe a higher frequency. So, which means now we have to decide if we will have plus at the top or plus at the bottom. So, we have to decide plus or minus at the top, plus or minus at the bottom. So, let's go and, and to do that. So, we say, okay, frequency of a listener, which is our car, is equal to V plus or minus velocity of a listener over V plus or minus velocity of a source times the frequency of a source. So, this is our Doppler effect formula, right? But now we must choose the size that we are going to use. So, you know that 3 over 4 is equal to 0 0.75, right? You can see the numerator is smaller and the denominator is bigger. Look at 4 over 3. 4 over 3 is equal to 1.333 and so on. It continues recurring this now. So, this is called 4 over 3 is called 4.33. So, you see here, the numerator is bigger. Look what happens. If your numerator is smaller, look what you get. You get 0 point something, right? It becomes, so if, listen, if your numerator, right, is smaller than your denominator, the answer that you get will be 0 point something, right? It will be less than 1. That's what we we'll get. But if your numerator is greater than your denominator, the answer that you get will be greater than one, because this is greater than one. So, if you multiply by this number or this number, the answer of the bigger one will be greater than that. So if you say, maybe, times x times x. So, you get 4 over 3 x and you get 3 over 4 x. So this part here is bigger. Why? Because the numerator is bigger. I want to use this a similar logic to this one. So let me try to use it. Let me clear. So here's what I'm trying to do. So here, we want the frequency of a listener of our car, which is one the frequency of the listener, which is our car, to be as big as possible. Because we know here we're going to observe a higher frequency from the emitted sound waves, right? So we want the frequency of the listener, of the car, which is our, our car, to be as big as possible. And why am I saying that? I'm saying that because I know that the car is approaching the source of sound, so it will observe a higher frequency. It will register a higher frequency. So we want the frequency of a listener to be as big as possible. So to achieve that, you want your fraction here to be as big as possible as well. So for a fraction to be as big as possible, you need your numerator to be big as possible and your denominator to be as small as possible. So if you want your numerator to be possible, which means that on top here you must add so that you can get a bigger number. And at the bottom, you must subtract so that you can get a smaller number. Like I said, you had 3 over 4 and 4 over 3. And I said that 4 over 3 is greater than 3 over 4. So in this case, what this does, it sets up a situation such that your numerator is big as possible and your denominator is small as possible. So that will give you a bigger uh, proportion of this frequency of a listener. No problem. Now let's go. Our listener is our car, right? No problem. Our listener will want the frequency of a listener. This V, which is the same as this one, is the speed of sound in air, which is 340 meters per second. No problem. This is the velocity of a listener. So what is our listener? Our listener is the car, because we're looking at the right sound waves now, and the red ones, the ones that are registered by the car here. Right? We're looking at the red ones. So our listener is the car. What is the velocity of the car, which is the listener? The velocity of the listener, which is the car, is 22 meters per second. No problem. Then V is the same with that one. This is the velocity of the source. What is the source of sound? The source of sound is this device here. And we know our device is what? It's stationary. So the velocity of the device is 
0 meters per second. No problem. This is the velocity of the device, which is the source. That is the frequency of the source. So what is the frequency of the sound waves emitted by the device? At what frequency is our device emitting the sound wave? So <clears throat> the device is emitting, which is the source of sound, frequency of the source, is emitting sound wave at a frequency of 24,000 hertz. Done. No problem. So what we want is this one. So we substitute this information here and find our frequency of a listener. So let's go. We say frequency of a listener is equal to V, which is 340, plus 22, all over V, which is also 340, minus 0, times the frequency of a source, which is what? 24,000. So we patch that on our calculator and see what we get. So what we get, it will be the frequency of a listener, which is the frequency observed by the car. So it will be the frequency of the sound waves that are bouncing off the car. No problem. So let's find that and see. So the answer that we get, we get that the frequency of a listener is equal to 25,000. 552.94 hertz. What you see here is the frequency of a listener. So which means the frequency of the sound wave that get to this car is what? Is 25,552.94 hertz. So the device emitted sound waves at, at a frequency of 24,000 hertz, right? And the car registered those sound waves at a frequency of 25,552.94 hertz. So these sound waves are bouncing off this car. They are bouncing off the car. They are turning back to the device. Because they are reflected off. They are bouncing off the car back to the device. What does that mean? What this tells us is that now, our car become a source of this reflected sound wave. Our car becomes a source of the reflected sound waves. So now our car, it's more like it is the source of sound now. So what you want to find now is what will be the frequency detected by the device. Right? So you look at this car as a source of these sound waves because it's reflecting them back to the device. So you want to know how much is the frequency detected by the de device now? That's what you want to find. What do you say? Okay, you say, okay. We want the frequency of the device, which is also the listener of the device. So say the frequency of a listener is called V plus or minus velocity of a listener over V plus or minus velocity of a source times the frequency of a source. So what do you do? Decide if you have plus or minus or plus or minus. But look at this. You look at this car, this car is reflecting the sound waves back to the device, right? So this car acts as a source of sound waves that are detected by the device. So what will happen is this car is a source and this car device is a listener. And the source of sound is approaching our device. So, which means our device will observe higher frequencies than that produced by the car or that reflected by the car. Let me repeat this thing again. What I'm saying is, this car is reflecting these sound waves of, at a fre of frequency 25,000, 552.94 hertz. And the car now acts as a source of sound waves relative to or compared to the device. So, and our device now is observing or detecting these sound waves back from the car. So, the car is somehow a source of sound waves now. And those sound waves are listened by our device, which is our detector. And our source of sound waves, which is the car, is moving towards the detector. Right? So, which means now you will observe a higher frequency because... As the car is getting closer and closer, the sound waves will reach the device at a faster rate. So, or you don't have to go deep, deep. You can just say now, my source of sound, which is, looks like it's the car now, will 
is approaching our device, which means the device will observe a higher frequency, which is a similar situation as if, if you're standing in an ambulance, which is with a siren on, approaches you, right? The siren will sound louder and louder and louder, which is the pitch, will appear to increase as it's coming to you. When it passes, it goes down. So in this case, the source of sound, which is the kind of approaching our device, what will that do? The frequency of the observed sound waves will be higher. That's what will happen. So we want this frequency to be as high as possible. To get the frequency to be as high as possible, which is your numerator should be as big as possible, and the denominator to be as small as possible. So which means you want a higher frequency, so you must have a plus here and a minus there. So you want the frequency of a listener, right? You have the speed of sound in AV to be 340 meters per second. You have the velocity of a listener. Your listener is your device at this point, if you're looking at the green words. Your velocity of a listener is what? Is zero meters per second. And your V is the same, your velocity of a source. Your source is the car. The source is moving at 22 meters per second. And the frequency of a source, which is the car, which is the reflected sound waves, is what? 25,000. 25,552.94 hertz. So, what is the frequency of a listener? So, frequency of a listener is equal to 340 plus velocity of a listener, which is zero, over uh, um, 340 minus velocity of a source. Velocity of a source is 22. And the frequency of a listener, which is what? Uh, 25,552.94 hertz. So the frequency of a listener is equal to the answer to this. And it should be bigger because the source of sound is approaching the listener or the detector. So 340 plus 0 over 340 minus 22 times uh, 25,552.94. And the answer is 27,320.75 hertz. So, which means the detector here is reached in the green repeated sound waves at that frequency. That's what is happening. And I hope this does make sense to you, as it does to me. So, I'm done with 6.1 and we'll go to 6.2. Now we'll go to 6.2. Okay, so now we're doing 6.2. And 6.2 read as follow. The spectral lines observed for a distant star show that the star is moving away from Earth. Explain by referring to frequency how one can deduce the star is moving away from Earth. Let me try to read this thing again. They are saying the spectral lines observed for a distant star show that the star is moving away from Earth. Explain by referring to frequency how one can deduce that the star is moving away from Earth. So, I'm going to show a, 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 a continuous spectrum for visible light, right? I'm going to show a continuous spectrum. Actually, it won't be continuous. I'll show an absorption spectrum, right, for, a, for visible light. It won't be continuous because I'll try to explain. I'll, I'll try to draw it here, but I'll also show it. So whatever that I'm trying to draw here will be the same as what I'm trying to show here. No problem. So let's say you have an, uh, an absorption spectrum, right? So you know, right, uh, the, I'm doing this for visible light. For visible light or what they call white light. White light, no problem. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to, you know that visible light is made up of these colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, uh, blue, uh, indigo, and violet. Right, it's these colors. So you know that here, the violet is chilling here. Let me write others in between. 
So these are the colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Right? So you know that the red part of the of this uh, of the visible light spectrum uh, is this is this is uh, red this is red this is the red end of it right this red end have um, the wavelength is very long the longest wavelength right and the frequency is the lowest here so on the red part of the spectrum you have the longest wavelength and the short and the lowest frequency on the blue end of the spectrum this is the blue end of the spectrum right on the blue end of the spectrum the wavelength which is on this side of the spectrum the wavelength is the shortest you have the shortest wavelength and the frequency is the highest you have the highest frequency on this side of the spectrum right no problem so um yeah you have the shortest frequency on the spectrum so what happens is you know the spectrum okay if you are studying a, a certain star right let's say you're studying a certain star that i don't know let's say that star shows some absorption spectral lines and let's say the spectral lines one is here the other is there Maybe the other is somewhere there. This is the normal day of the star. The spectral lines sit on those positions. Let me try to use a much brighter light color. So let's say the special, one special line is here, the other is there, the other is there. Right? This is a normal day for the spectral line. Right? No problem. So if the star is moving away. Like in Doppler, here the car was moving towards the device. We said we were going to observe a higher frequency. Right? If the car was moving away from this device, we're going to observe a lower frequency. So, what happens is, if the star is moving away from Earth, it's going, this frequency is going to observe the same way as it does for Doppler. Which means, you will see you will see or you will observe lower frequencies lines with lower frequencies that's what will happen so we're saying now the star is moving away from earth these normal spectral lines that you know will shift to the side that have lower frequencies because the star is moving away the same way if the vehicle is moving away from you or from the source of sound there will be a lower frequency of sound so what I'm saying is, you have this normal red line. These are normal absorption spectral lines or known absorption spectral lines. No problem. So if the star is moving away, which means you should be observing wavelengths, right, of lower frequencies. And the wavelengths of lower frequencies are on this red side, right, of the spectrum. They are on this side of the spectrum. So what will happen is those Spectral lines that you know will shift towards the red side. They will shift to the right. So, I'm going to get another color. So what will happen is, this, this, uh, the frequency is the, the, the frequency is the lowest this side. It's the highest in that side, right? So this line that is normally here will shift towards the side of lower frequency because the source of light which is the star is moving away so you, when you are observing that star, you will be observing, or maybe, frequencies of lower wavelengths now will be absorbed. So this will be here, and this will be here. So the position of spectral lines will shift towards the sides of lower frequencies because the light is moving away from us. So what will happen is the frequencies of lower wavelengths will be absorbed. This is how this thing works. So, what will happen is, you will say that the spectral lines will shift towards the side of lower frequencies, which is the red part of your visible light, of, or, or, or your uh, visible electromagnetic spectrum. 
So these lines, these red lines will move, which is the known, the normal known positions of spectral lines will shift and will shift towards the red part or towards the lower frequencies. So, and this thing is called the red shift. So I'm not sure if I should write it or not, but I would rather not. So, but if you want to write it, you'll say, uh, I'll write it here because I don't have space. You'll say, uh, they say, explain in terms of what? By frequency, you say, your spectral lines, which is these normal lines that you know, these normal ones, they will shift position towards lower frequencies. The spectral lines will shift to lower frequencies. And this thing is called what? It's called the red shift. Because uh, these lines will be shifting towards the red part of the visible light uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, I think I'm done here and I hope this does make sense to you as it does to me. And thank you for watching. We'll meet on the next video. Cheers.